Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. We've been getting a ton of great Star Wars content lately, and the Star Wars main comic series from Charles Soule is no exception. So let's dive right into the story and see where it takes our heroes. The issue opens, and Commander Zara is savoring her defeat over the Rebels at Rendezvous Point Delta Three in the Midrim. But Lieutenant Gore has to be a Debbie Downer, of course, and informs Commander Zara that the Empire has no leads on where the remaining Rebels cells are located, as we learned in issue 1 that the Empire was able to crack the Rebels' encryption codes for communicating with one another. Lieutenant Gore then suggests that the crew aboard Tarkin's Will take this time to make repairs to the ship's hull before they embark on their next engagement, which does not go over well with Commander Zara, who begins to explain that Tarkin's Will is a memorial to the tragedy that was the destruction of the Death Star, and all those lost by its destruction. Commander Zara continues, stating that that she specifically chose this ship when Darth Vader tasked her with hunting down the remnants of the Rebel fleet as her flagship, bringing the ship back to life before it was to be scrapped, but keeping the ship's exterior damage intact. Additionally, the crew of Tarkin's Will, Commander Zara explains, were specifically picked because each lost someone in the Death Star's destruction. Lieutenant Gore apologizes to Commander Zara for his ignorance and offers his condolences if she lost someone in the Death Star's destruction to which Zara states that she did, and then she promises that she'll whisper that person's name into the ear of Princess Leia before she slits Leia's throat. Damn, homegirl is pissed. Obviously we know that Princess Leia won't die by Commander Zara's hands, but I'm very intrigued by the possibility of them either duking it out in a space battle or in a one-on-one -on -one fight. We then return to our heroes, and we see that Luke, Leia and Lando have entered Bespin's atmosphere and are heading to Cloud City. Luke is unsure if he'll be able to actually find his lightsaber, but Lando assures him that he'll be able to find it, since he knows Cloud City inside and out and already has a good idea as to where it wound up. Lando then questions Leia's reasons for joining he and Luke on their mission, and Leia states that she has her own reasons for coming along, and also reassures him that she won't let Lando out of her sight. We also learn that Lando has a debt to pay to someone that he's left behind on Cloud City, which is why he's returning. They are then interrupted by Cloud City's security forces, telling our heroes they have to submit clearance codes or be fired upon. Lando quickly de-escalates the situation by doing what he does best, smooth talking his way out out of trouble. He learns the name of one of the security forces, a woman by the name of Karen, and asks about her son. Once Karen realizes it's actually Lando, Lando asks her to pretend like they're attempting to shoot our heroes out of the sky but miss and allow them an opportunity to get into Cloud City and work on taking care of the Empire. Lando tells Luke to fly towards Cloud City security systems, though Luke and Leia are worried that Lando's plan will get them killed. Once close enough to the turrets, however, Lando transmits a deactivation code for the security system using the comm system on his wrist, shutting down the city's defense grid. As soon as they land, stormtroopers descend upon them and blow up their transport ship, but Lando uses his wrist comm to close a door on them and squashes them to death. Damn. From there, Lando tells Luke his lightsaber is most likely in Smelting Core D-52, and then Lando, Luke, and Leia all split up. Luke heads off in search of his lightsaber. Leia says that she has an errand of her own, but is vague about what that will entail, and Lando has to rescue the person he came back to Cloud City for. As Luke descends into Cloud City, he can't help but recall moments from his duel with Darth Vader, dwelling on the fact that his father wanted him to turn to the dark side and rule the galaxy together as father and son. Meanwhile, Leia has returned to where Han was frozen in carbonite, and we see that Lando has returned to rescue Lobot, who has been hooked up to the central processing core for the city with an absurd amount of wires. However, because of this, Lando's job will be made easier, as he'll be able to access pretty much anything in Cloud City through Lobot. We're then introduced to Captain Tranch, who has such a terrible name, along with one of his subordinates, who does a fine job of explaining that Cloud City is one big Tabana gas processor, that it takes raw Tabana from the atmosphere, filters out the impurities, which results in fresh Tabana gas. The impurities are then frozen in carbonite and shot directly into the sun. Man, if only we could solve our problems by blasting things into the sun. We then learn that our man Lando had Lobot vent out the impurities that were filtered out of the Tabana and into 
Bespin's atmosphere, which just so happens to now also be pure and will infect everything that it touches, including their current supply of pure Tabana gas. Tranche then dispatches stormtroopers to the central mainframe on level 109, which is where Lando and Lobot are. We then return to Leia, who seems to be sneaking around and investigating the carbon freezing facility, but she's soon stunned by a stormtrooper that's found her. As that is happening, Lando finds himself about to be swarmed by stormtroopers and calls Luke to see if he'll come and help him out. But Luke has just gotten to the smelting core and wants to first find his lightsaber. So yeah, good luck with that one, Luke. Meanwhile, Captain Ranch, I mean Tranch, is informed that stormtroopers found Leia, who doesn't appear to be a Bespinite, and Tranch chides his subordinate and tells the Ensign to follow protocol, which would be to have Leia transported to the closest Imperial Security Bureau outpost for interrogation. The Imperial Security Bureau was a law enforcement and intelligence agency of the Galactic Empire that was charged with matters of internal state security and ensuring the loyalty of citizens to the the Empire. They served a similar function as the punk ass SS did in Nazi Germany. Tranch then orders the stormtrooper to follow the new procedure on handling issues such as this, and they then freeze Leia in carbonite. And that's where the issue ends. I'm thoroughly enjoying this series so far. I'm still antsy to find out who found Luke's lightsaber, but I imagine that will be answered next issue. Also, it's interesting seeing the stormtroopers interacting, following orders blindly, especially when we think about the fact that they're just carbon freezing people that they suspect could be up to no good without any proof whatsoever. Totalitarian regimes, man. I'm curious how Lando and Lobot are going to escape the situation they're in and how Leia will get unfrozen. Seeing them return to Cloud City was really cool and issue 4 looks to be another exciting ride. But what did you guys think of this issue? How do you suspect Leia will escape the carbon freezing? And where the hell is Luke's lightsaber in that heap of a junk pile? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's on Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy.